Hey guys, David here from Mention Flat Review. Um, I hope you all had a good start into 2018. So I also want to say thanks at this point for all the likes and comments that I recently got on my other videos. Um, I really appreciate that. So this next video is going to be mostly about the pitter tube itself, drain hole and drain hole blockage in particular. However, I will give you a quick review on pitter static system errors just so that you can follow me easier um, on the drain hole uh, stuff, okay? And last but not least, I will also give you a short introduction into an online simulator about the pitot static system, which is a great uh, way to learn about the system itself. So I would just say stay tuned um, and I'll see you in just a moment. Yes, hey guys, and welcome to the actual lesson part of this video. So uh, let's get started. So first of all, I'd like to talk about the pitot tube itself for just a moment. Um, we have the uh, rammer inlet right here. Um, this is the pressure chamber and this line going right into the diaphragm of the air spin indicator. Um, in the back here of the pitot tube we usually have our drain hole location. Okay, So somewhere within this area, this is where our drain hole is located. Um, and I will show you a real picture of the drain hole um, later in this video. So the drain hole is usually located uh, right here as already mentioned. Um, some pitot tubes have more than one drain hole, as visible on this picture. Okay, this one um, on, on this picture is another one just uh, below the ram air inlet, which would be probably right around here. So the drain hole is usually located at the back side of the pitot tube at, or at a different place, but so, usually somewhere where it's only receiving undisturbed airflow or ambient uh, air pressure. And uh, if you're wondering what this is, the static hole, um, just want to make you aware of this really quick. Static hole is nothing else but a static port. Some manufacturers of airplanes like to uh, combine a pitot tube with the static hole in one piece. And that's pretty much it. So static hole is the same as a static port. Uh, so that you do not confuse the two um, as they look about the same. Okay, so uh, let's go and talk about the uh, pitot static system arrows next. Give you a little review on that. So here we come to um, the blockages or errors that you can possibly encounter with the pitot static system. So first problem I would like to uh, review really quick is what happens if the pitot tube ram air inlet becomes blocked. As you can see on the picture on the right to help you in, um, visualize that scenario, ram air inlet blocked, drain hole and static ports remain open. And as I already mentioned just a moment ago, the drain hole is located at a spot where it's only receiving uh, ambient air pressure, the exact same pressure as the static ports do. Now remember, the pressure from the pressure chamber goes right into the diaphragm, the pressure from the static ports go right into the instrument case. So if both of these have the same pressure, um, the diaphragm will not expand, neither will it contract, so there will be no needle movement, so your yeah, indicated airspeed will remain right at zero knots, okay? So if we have these two open and the rammer in that block, our airspeed indicator will just indicate zero knots. Problem number two, uh, what happens if we have the uh, ram air inlet and the drain hole block but not the aesthetic ports? Very simple. Um, in this case, our airspeed indicator will just work as an altimeter showing an increase in airspeed as we climb and a decrease in airspeed as we descend. Okay, so let's talk about problem number three here. What would happen if our aesthetic ports become blocked? Um, while our drain hole and the uh, ram air inlet, so basically the entire pitot tube itself remains open. Now in this case, um, I would like to use this little airplane here, our Cess uh, my Cessna 172 here that I still got from my own flight training. Um, so we pretend to be cruising at a given airspeed, given altitude, let's say at 6,000 feet at 110 knots. Okay, so if that would be happening, and our um, static ports become blocked due to um, icing or whatsoever, okay? In that case, I uh, would not expect a change of airspeed because we are cruising along, um, the power setting remains the same, um, we're not changing our attitude, nothing changes, so we would not expect a change, and this is the dangerous situation because we would not expect a change, um, we will not figure out if our static port becomes blocked eventually. And let's say it does become blocked, if we go from a level flight into a nose down attitude, um, in that case we'll only have that dynamic pressure going into the ram inlet, ending up in our diaphragm. So that will lead to a higher than usual indicated airspeed. And the exact opposite would happen if we go from a straight level flight into a climb, 
um, will have a slightly lower um, than usual indicated airspeed. And another error that comes into play here that's sometimes a bit forgotten or neglected is the fact that we also have the pitot tube position error. Uh, if you're flying at an angle, that's the same by the way for a slow flight, um, you have air coming from right here, which is the, the relative wind, right, or dynamic pressure going into the ram in that, but you also have air coming from the direction that you're going to, okay, so um, incline, if, if we are right here, we're going up, so we have air coming from right there, but we are also making distance over ground, and so we also, theoretically speaking, but probably also practically speaking, we have not only air from right here, but also air from right here, from this direction, okay, um, so this is another arrow or that we have to think about. So again, if the static ports become blocked, we'll have a slightly higher than usual indicated airspeed during a descent and a slightly lower than usual indicated airspeed during climbs. Okay? So if you want to have more information about all these arrows, more um, details um, and uh, more details about the pivot to position arrow, please check out my other video, which is also um, linked in the description part or in the upper left corner of the screen, okay? Okay, so now let's finally go over to um, drain hole and drain hole blockage. So everyone, finally we come to the part uh, where I initially came up with the idea of making this video. Um, it's the drain hole, drain hole blockage that uh, many people are confused about, um, but I want to give you a review of the errors so that you can follow me easier with my explanations, okay? So what would happen if the train hole became blocked? Now, as you can see, the train hole itself, as already stated, um, is located at the backside of the pitot tubes. Now for this example, for this explanation, we pretend we only have this uh, train hole present on the pitot tube. So let me show you a picture here of um, an actual train hole. All right, guys, uh, if you have not had your very first flight lesson yet, um, this is what a drain hole looks like. Believe it or not, it's this little hole right here. It's only about one to two millimeters in um, width, maybe, so it's very, very small. Um, and its primary purpose is to extract overdue moisture or water out of the pressure chamber within the pitot tube. Now, you might wonder or ask yourself, how does water come into the pressure chamber in first place? It's a good question, very simple to answer though. Let's say you're flying through visible moisture, which could be clouds, right? Um, or you're flying through rain. Uh, if you fly through rain, remember you the pitot tube is pointed directly into the wind, getting all that dynamic pressure. And with that wind that comes in in the front, you will also eventually get some water in there uh, from the rain. And this water might collect within the pressure chamber. And if you've been flying from a warm air mass into a cold air mass, for example, and the cold air mass is very cold, maybe near freezing, you might get some um, frozen water in there and you really don't want this to happen. Eventually your drain hole is going to freeze over as well. So the drain hole is there um, to um, get this water out of the pressure chamber to prevent the water from freezing in first place. Okay, this is why we have a drain hole. Um, and again, there may be more than one drain hole present on one pit or tube. So let's go back to the other picture here again. So, since you all know how a drain hole looks like by now, if this one is blocked, um, yes, we may have a little bit of a higher pressure within our pressure chamber right here. That's probably true, but it will not be indicated by our airspeed indicator, okay? So, in other words, if we have the drain hole blocked, we will have no negative or significant effect on our airspeed reading. Okay? The needle will not move more than it did before because there's higher pressure. No, there might be a little bit of a higher pressure in there eventually, yes, but it's not enough to give us a higher airspeed indication. So for all those of you who wonder um, if there is a big uh, effect on indicated airspeed, the answer is simply no. So let's talk about one more question here that I was recently asked um, uh, about the train hold as well. So the question that I was recently asked is, if the train hole's only purpose is to extract water from the pitot tube, why does the ASI indicate a drop when the pitot tube is blocked while the train hole remains open? Now, this question has already been answered actually um, during the review part that I did a moment ago, but I would like to point it out again 
as it seems really confusing for uh, many students or pilots. Again, the drain hole, as you all know by now, is located at the backside of the pitot tube, receiving only ambient air pressure. Okay, it has nothing to do with direct airflow like the ram air inlet. No, it's it's getting the same amount of pressure and the same kind of pressure as the static ports do, meaning undisturbed airflow or ambient air pressure. There's a static port right here, which you can see the same hole looks about the same, maybe around the same size as well. So if you now wonder, okay, but what is ambient air pressure? Now ambient air pressure is nothing else but the air that you have around the airplane. Let's say you're staying on the ground next to your airplane. The, the air that you feel is exactly the same as what your static ports or in that case uh, your drain hole is receiving. Nothing else but that. Okay, so it's under disturbed air or the air surrounding your airplane at any given moment, at any given spot. That might be at the, on the ground or right at 6,000 feet, 3,000 feet, whatever altitude. That's what we call ambient air pressure. Um, just to clarify that for you. Now, before we come to the very end of this video, I would like to show you a simulator that I became aware of um, in the past. Unfortunately, not until I had finished my own flight training. So, let me show you that simulator and um, we'll be right back here. Um, welcome to the very last part of this video. Um, the simulator of Luis Montero, he's a private flight instructor himself. And he came up with this simulator, um, which is, I think, great. It illustrates uh, or shows you the um, blockages and the effects of blockages on the pedostatic system. So what you have right here, we have two main windows, right? We have the simulated system window and a reference system. Uh, here we will be able to choose our altitude and airspeed, and here we can configure our system. Now, first one, I will just uh, climb to 10,000 feet, not do anything to our system. You can just watch and see that the altitude and airspeed, uh, or specifically the airspeed, um, work both the same way. The same if we go down, um, there's no change in anything, both work the same, okay? No blockages, nothing whatsoever. However, if I now go ahead and um, block the drain hole, watch what happens to this window here. So the drain hole is now blocked, which looks like icing eventually. The reference system is the one that remains completely clear, clear of any obstruction. So we will do the same thing. We'll climb up to 10,000 feet at around 80 knots and just watch what happens. This will be proof of my explanation from before, by the way, but uh, you should see it for yourself. So as you can see, airspeed, indicated airspeed, um, will stay or be the same on both systems. Okay, so basically this is what I meant with, if we have a train hole blockage, it will not affect our readings or our indicated airspeed, as you can easily see now on this simulator. Now, of course, uh, you can uh, play around with this yourself. Again, I just wanted to introduce the simulator to you as I personally think it's a very good system to play around and learn from. Um, you can do different configurations here. I'm not going to do it now because it will uh, take too much time. Furthermore, you can also go ahead and uh, take a look at my webpage, of course, that is um, ifr dash review.com. Uh, you will also have a uh, an article regarding the uh, pedostatic system, related errors, and so on and so forth. I hope you like this video. I hope you can learn something from it. And I hope I was able to clarify most of your questions or doubts about train hole, train hole blockage. Uh, anyways, leave me a uh, thumbs up. Um, I would appreciate that, of course, if you like the video. Leave me a comment with any questions uh, or further questions that you still may have. Again, I'm David from Instrument Fly with you. Thanks for watching your video. Have a great day and see you later. Bye-bye.